around uh, the world. Let's begin with the Times leading with the unprecedented worldwide manhunt underway for the Foreign Legion of Killers revealed in a gruesome Islamic State video. Indeed, that's also our top story. France has identified one of at least 20 foreign killers as a Catholic man from Normandy. The International New York Times examines India's plan to dig deeper for coal, citing the fears of scientists who think it could push the world over the brink of irreversible climate change. And as Japan's economy sinks into a traumatic recession, the Japan Times looks at what went wrong and whether Prime Minister Shinzo Abe will postpone a second sales tax hike. The Bank of England's governor plans to make badly behaving bankers pay back their salaries and not just their bonuses. Apparently, this could face severe legal challenges. No surprise there. Uh, This is the story in the business section of the Daily Telegraph. And another headline, hallelujah, the long wait is over. The Guardian has an opinion piece on the Church of England voting to allow female bishops. And Prince William has teamed up with the makers of Angry Birds to release a game highlighting the dangers of illegal poaching. That's in China Daily. Well, joining us is Mark Davies, CEO of the strategy consultancy, Camberton. Good morning. Good morning. Very good to have you with us. Uh, We're going to take a a look first. Um, We've seen the parents of uh, Abdul Rahman, also known as Peter Kasich, uh, this morning, uh, speaking, of course, in loving terms about their son. But what's happening on the political side is this hunt for the people that were seen within the video. Do you think this latest video changes anything? I think it's a slightly misleading headline. The worldwide hunt implies that we're looking around the world for these people. Obviously, we know where they are, or at least we're trying to identify exactly where they are. Um, The answer to your question is that I think there's more detail in the video that came out yesterday with Peter Cassig than there has been in past ones. So there's more for the security services to go on. And I think it was quite interesting yesterday to hear French government officials talking about French citizens in much more direct terms, I think, than on the whole we do in this country. We tend to talk about implications, um, whereas the French guy yesterday was was very directly talking about somebody as if he had all the information to hand. Um, So there has obviously been a little bit of a change, and perhaps it's because there's more detail in the videos this time around than than there has been in the past. And also as well, the article sort of points to the fact that, that in terms of the search, it's it's gone global, i.e. the US is involved, Europe, Middle East, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, you know, all the sort of intelligence services from all these different countries are trying to pull together what they know. That's what we're led to believe anyway. Well, that's right. But there has been a, a good, good coalition on this for quite a while. There are 60 countries involved in the fight against the Islamic State. At its core, of course, is NATO, except for Turkey. Turkey's part of NATO, but hasn't joined this coalition. So we're not completely united, but there has been quite a a strong coalition against Islamic State for some time. I think what's different here is that for the first time, there is discussion about other um, nationalities being part of the Islamic group. It's interesting. There was a Frank Gardner, our BBC's Frank Gardner report on about how it could be a strategy of Islamic State that they want to show as many nationalities as possible, Muslims from as many countries as possible, almost as a recruiting tool as they talked about mm. this video. Yeah, possibly. Let's change tack now completely. International New York Times, as others try to clean air, India raises bet on coal. And of course, others may be referring back to that big story last week when we saw Obama and uh, President Xi in China agreeing on new targets that China and the US are setting when it comes to trying combating uh, global emissions. This is quite a scary read, isn't it? Well, it's completely the other end of the spectrum. I think last week people were very positive, thinking, OK, we've got the Chinese on board. That's a, a major positive. And now suddenly the Indians have said that they're going to double the amount of mining that they do for coal uh, in the coming years between now and, and 2019. You bear in mind that the Indians comprise 17.5% of the global population, that is a a massive issue Mm. for us. Because here in Europe, we're talking about cutting emissions by 40% over the coming years. But the largest population in Europe is the Germans. They come 16th in the list against the Indians at second place. And the entire European population only comes to about 4.5% of the globe. So for the Indians, comprising such a massive uh, proportion of the globe to say, actually, We've got to think about other things other than climate change is going to have a significant impact. 
It is interesting as China really was taking the headlines in India to the sideline last week, really, between uh, G20. Although Narendra Modi, I don't know if you've seen that, in Australia, has had rock star status wherever he has gone, uh, India's prime minister. So India back on the front pages. Let's turn to the the Japan Times. Uh, Indeed, I mentioned that quote, the traumatic recession that the economy is uh, sinking into. It was expected in some ways, Mark, though, right? Well, this is one of those things that seems to have happened so many times over the last 20 years that it's no longer a surprise. Japan seems to have been in permanent recession um, since the late 80s, when, of course, you know, there was a period where it was you know, the, the economy that everybody wanted to, to follow. And since then, nothing appears to have gone right. So I don't think this is too much surprise for people. I think... Equally, when you go to Japan, I, I, I found myself in Tokyo thinking to myself, is this what recession looks like? You, you'd never know wandering around Tokyo that there is uh, the recession that, that they've had for so many years, deflation for so many years. Having said which, it will cause a political crisis. Japan is uh, pretty used to um, political crises, but uh, yes, there'll probably be a, a change of government. And Shinzo Abe, as it is, is a, is a prime minister who's come back. Um, having uh, once been in power and then and then relinquished it, and then he came back in December a couple of years ago. So um, I think it's more of the same really in Japan. I'm not sure that we're seeing any any major development. But one of the uh, one of the issues, <clears throat> one of the big reasons that cited as as why is this increase in the sales tax, which was a big deal in April because mm. it was so politically unpopular. Many governments couldn't sort of try and make that happen. Shinzo Abe did do it. He's possibly going to do it again in October next year, although he might postpone that idea now, given what's happened to the economy. Well, I think it's likely that he will postpone it now, because yeah. it, has, it seems to be one of the things that's pushed the economy into recession. Um, so, you know, perhaps that's a And it's so difficult, for... isn't it? Because the government's trying to get some money in its coffers through, you know, getting a sales tax in place, which was so unpopular. And this is the reaction. I mean, it's quite incredible, really, because all economists were not expecting that, that figure yesterday. They were expecting a bit of of growth, but mm. not certainly not a big number in the wrong direction. It'll be interesting to see how it develops uh, throughout the day. We will stay <laughs> with it. Sally will bring us all those updates as they occur throughout the morning. What about this one? <laughs> yeah, the business section of the Daily Telegraph, Carney, uh, pay plan comes under attack. Just tell us what the pay plan is and, well, and, and the want, opposition as well. He, he, um, Carney wants to be able to claw back the actual pay, not just bonuses. There's already a clawback on bonuses. You can claw back bonuses now up to seven years after they've been awarded. He wants to award pay in the form of performance bonds so that that, in turn, can be pulled back. And, of course, the laws are saying you can't do that. And, you'd have to and this is pulled back from and... bankers who are seen to have been... Behaving badly. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's in order to prevent them behaving badly. So okay. you can say, look, you've been paid, uh, and bankers then, then you do bad things. We can get back <laughs> your, like your money. <laughs> the reality is they, they want to, to stop the, the, the huge uh, salaries that are being paid. And they've tried to do that through the bonuses. It hasn't really worked. And now they're trying to look at it through salaries themselves. Um, I think a what lot of people will be saying good luck. Argument though that you know it's it's a global it's a global field, and if they're not going to be paid this in London, that's be the else. argument that you hear from bankers. I work briefly in the city myself. I have to say, I think it's the most ridiculous argument. The, the jobs themselves are not that difficult. It just happens that they deal with huge sums of money. And as a result, they get paid a proportion of that. But actually, the job is no different and no more difficult than any other job. Well, I'm, I'm sure, sure some agree. Agree. <laughs> I'm sure they anyway, would, but uh, having been there challenge. myself once, I would uh, argue argue the toss. Okay. Way. <laughs> to something, to a different job. Female bishops. Uh, hallelujah, the long wait is over, so says uh, the Guardian, Giles Fraser in particular, having an opinion piece. Uh, and he is delighted uh, with the fact that the church has decided that female bishops will be a reality in the future. But this was something that was incredible, vociferous uh, debate uh, between it. I wonder will the rest of the world follow Well, from a very small minority of people, and, and the way that the voting goes in the Synod, it allowed a very small group of people to stop this happening for a very long time. This is the point that Giles Fraser makes in this piece in The Guardian. It is 20 years since women were ordained, so really th- there's no good reason why it should have taken so long. Once you've decided that you can ordain uh, a woman, then to say, well, by the way, you can't promote her 
in any other walk of life, you wouldn't get away with it. But somehow, the church has been able to say that for the last 20 years. I think when it comes to gender equality, it sometimes does take a while. Now, well, Angry Birds, uh, Prince recruits them to, to help help wildlife. We've, we, we've probably got 10 seconds, Mark. Oh, well, he's, crea- he's created this game uh, to try and uh, draw attention to uh, poaching issues. And he's got together with the maker of Angry Birds. There's going to be a big tournament starting on Monday. There you go. Watch your space. Well done, Mark. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you very much. You can catch all those, our paper review, some of those stories also on our website. Thanks very much. See you soon. Bye. Bye.